Good morning, good afternoon, good evening traders. Wherever you are in the world, I hope you're all well and I hope you're all enjoying your weekend. Pips of Persia here, coming to you with another weekly market outlook video, preparing you for the trading week of 24th of June 2019 to 30th of June 2019. Now I do apologize for not recording weekly market outlook videos in the past couple weeks, but I have been sending setups out on my Telegram and Trading View, so hopefully you guys benefit, benefited from those setups. <clears throat> Before we get started, as usual, disclaimers. These setups are purely for educational purposes and by no means require any action. Your capital is at risk, therefore never risk more than what you're willing to lose. Past profits do not guarantee future results. Guys, without saying, please make sure to take notes, please make sure to screenshot the analysis that you like and you agree with. If in any way you disagree with the analysis that I'm about to cover in this video, then please stick to your own analysis. There's no need to look at my analysis as in any way better than yours. There will be a good few currency pairs that I'm going to go through in this video, so this will be a relatively long video. Um, so do make sure to take notes, do make sure to um, take screenshots and also join the Telegram channel as well. I'll leave the link in the description or just search Pips of Persia on Telegram. Uh, make sure to join that channel as well for more setups, for more information. And if you guys need to con uh, connect with me in any way, uh, feel free to message me on Instagram. Now, let's jump straight into it. Australian dollar versus the Swiss franc. On a weekly time frame, the first buy zone that I had was 0 0.688, around this price over there. Okay, that was the first buy zone, which if I'm not mistaken, on the four hour time frame, it got rejected very well. It was right over there. Uh, six, eight, okay, maybe not there. It's a little bit further down. Right over there, 0 0.688. We did reject that over there and we did have a rally up for about 30 or so pips. So I did have my stop loss at break even at that stage, but we did end up dropping further down. Now I'm just looking at the all-time low for Australian dollar versus Swiss franc. We are approaching the all-time low. We are approaching the weekly low that uh, it was in August 2015 and we have never ever on a weekly time frame closed below that price. That price being about 0 0.67. So we are very, very close to that zone over there. We can see that liquidity wick over there that happened around 2nd or 3rd of January rejected that zone, that specific zone as well, 0 0.67. So I do expect a very nice swing position to kick in from that zone, potentially for at least about 400 pips to the upside around 0 0.67 and uh, pushing the market further up. Now, this is not the sort of setup that I would have buy limit order on. This is a sort of setup that I would just have a alert on for 0 0.67 and just keep an eye on it when it comes there. That is, at the end of the day, the all-time low, so we need to keep an eye on it. If that gets broken to the downside, then that will be a very significant uh, fall for Australian dollar, in my opinion. Australian dollar versus the Japanese yen. Again, on a weekly time frame, my, the price that I have my eye on was 74. Uh, this 74, the price, this was covered on, um, on on my Telegram channel. We did reject that price on a daily time frame. We did end up closing as a hammer formation over there. However, the market is finding it a little bit difficult to follow through. We are still within this daily convergence as well. As you guys can see, the market is clearly converging on a daily time frame. Using my MACD at the bottom over there. So we still have this convergence. We have that round number. We have that hammer formation. Uh, I do expect a very nice rise to the upside. So come new, uh, come new week, uh, so tonight or Tuesday, more likely, Tuesday, uh, London, New York overlap, might be a good idea to um, look to execute some buy positions for Australian dollar versus Japanese yen to the upside, bringing us up to this FIB level, to the FIB region, 61.8 to 71%, right? And the touch of that four-hour trend line. It's a very simple setup. Very simple setup. The buy will be counter trend trading in this case, but we do have some very good confirmations for a buy entry. The sell would be a little bit safer. However, if we can catch it both ways, then why not? 400 pips plus another 600 pips, potential of 1,000 pips 
400 pips to the upside and 600 pips decline. Australian dollar versus the New Zealand dollar. On a four hour time frame, we have actually broken out of this downtrend where we have our high, the low, lower high, lower low, lower high, lower low. We have clearly broken out of that downtrend. We have taken out the uh, previous lower high over there. And in my opinion, all the market is doing right now is just creating some sort of a flag formation over there, creating this kind of general flag formation, pennant formation, and just giving us a pullback, getting ready for the next impulse to the upside. So what I have in mind in this specific case is I would like the market to decline a little bit further to reject the key fib zone, anywhere from 618 to 71% would be perfect. That will create a, um, that, that, that does line up with this zone of support in the past as well. And um, to be fair, we have already created the head and shoulder formation, but my entry would be at the 61.8. At the 61.8 entry would be around there for a nice buy position to the upside, stop loss below 78.6 if your account sizes can. Uh, have that big of a stop loss, then you can take your profits at the minus 27. Risk reward ratio is, is perfect on this setup as well. Australian dollar versus the US dollar. Weekly time frame. So although not last week, but the week before we have closed as a bearish engulfing, we have also tapped off a very key reversal zone in the market. Okay. So I'm kind of waiting for two different scenarios right now. On a four hour time frame, I'm either waiting, I would like to either see a decline to the downside first, a potential double bottom scenario over there for me to take my buy positions at, or a break and retest above this four hour trend line. So that four hour trend line where we've rejected it once, rejected it twice, I would like to see a break and retest for me to take some buy positions. If neither of these happen, if I don't get price action, goes without saying, I'm not going to be executing any buy positions, but a very straightforward, very easy setup. Canadian dollar versus the Japanese yen. Uh, da, 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 da. Weekly time frame. Okay, this was four hour analysis then, if I'm not mistaken. So, Canadian dollar versus Japanese yen. This general zone that I have marked up over here is a very strong zone of support. As you can see, the market has rejected it, rejected it over there as well, rejected it as resistance over there, so as support again over there. So I would like to see the market reject that zone once again, and that would line up very well with our key FIB levels, being 61 to 71% Fibonacci, okay? The other reason why I say this is because it looks as though we have turned from this kind of general um, bearish trend, this general bearish formation, to a potential bullish formation, to a potential bullish trend line, uh, forming an inverted head and shoulder right over there. Okay, so I would like to see a rejection off of this FIB level and the reversal zone for, for, for potential buy entries to come in. Now, goes without saying, I would need to see price action as well. I would need to see the market give us some very nice candlestick pattern or, or whatever to confirm the buy entry. Swiss franc versus the Japanese yen. On a weekly time frame, we have indeed closed as a bullish engulfing, which does scare me a little bit about this setup. But the general idea behind this currency pair right now is we are within this kind of pocket, I'm going to say, of these two trend lines that I have drawn on a weekly time frame. One coming from that high over there and one from this high. We are within this kind of general, again, pocket, I'd like to call it. Uh, that the market can easily reject it and potentially decline. Um, so I would like to see, I would like to see whether on a daily time frame or four hour time frame, we get any sort of candlestick pattern um, confirming the sell entry. But selling against that bullish engulfing is a little bit dangerous. So the other scenario that I'll be waiting for would be kind of a general break and retest scenario on a daily or four hour time frame. Uh, on a daily or four hour time frame, I would be waiting for a break and retest if we don't reject that those trend lines and the FIB level 
don't need Fibonacci in this case, but um, but yeah, if I don't get a nice rejection on a four hour time frame, I'll be expecting a more uh, breaking retest scenario for potential buy entries for, for CHFJPY. Euro versus Australian dollar. The first supply zone that we had marked up over here, we have officially closed above that supply zone. On a weekly time frame, we have closed above that supply zone, which kind of invalidates that specific zone right now for me. Uh, the next zone that I have my eye on for sell positions to, uh, to kick in is zero. Uh, sorry, 1.655. 1.655, right over there. On a weekly time frame, I can see... Uh, a lot of sell orders activated around that price, pushing the market down. Sell orders activated at that price, pushing the market down. Potentially, same thing can happen around the 1.655. So, it doesn't necessarily mean we should just wait for the sell position to kick in. We could be riding it up to that level as well. So, I do have a smaller scale trend line drawn over here. If we get another rejection of this trend line, I'll be looking for some buy entries up to 1.655 level. And when it taps off the 1.655 level, I will be looking for potential sell entries. The sell positions will be for a good few hundred pips to the downside. Uh, that is another supply zone on a weekly time frame that we have. So I would just like to see that market, that, that kind of zone to be rejected this time instead of broken through. Euro versus Canadian dollar. Uh, on a daily or weekly time frame, we are still in this kind of left shoulder, head, right shoulder formation over here. Uh, on a weekly time frame though, however, this kind of neckline that we have over here for the head and shoulder, which is working more as a trend line in this case uh, than a neckline, this gain rejected a, a lot of times to perfection, we still haven't closed below this neckline. We still haven't. On daily time frame we did, we came right back within the neckline. On a weekly time frame as well, we've closed as a, um, was that a uh, dragonfly doji? Sorry, I'm not sure why it took me that long to remember the name. Dragonfly doji closure over there. So this can potentially give us another push to the upside. This could potentially give us another push to the upside. That's definitely something I should be careful of. So... For me to be able to take some safe sell positions, I would need to see another push to the upside, another rejection off of this trend line over here, okay, another rejection of that trend line over there. That would be an ideal sell scenario for me. That would be an ideal sell scenario for the market to push up over there, and I will take my sell positions at that point over there. Um, provided that doesn't happen, it would be a little bit tricky to kind of analyze the market because of all of this consolidation zone over here but the best safest scenario would be a break and retest below this zone over here below the lowest the market the market has reached before the consolidation happened okay wait for a break and retest and the continuation if not wait for another push to the upside um, due to that weekly closure right over there euro versus a swiss franc um Euro versus Swiss franc. Now, this is an interesting one because um, there's a couple different things I'm looking at for Euro CHF right now. Uh, one of those things is we could, we could still reject this trend line over here. We could still reject this trend line and shoot to the upside. However, a more likely scenario would be a mere pullback to retest the broken through weekly zone. The weekly zone I'm talking about is this zone right over here. We can see rejections, rejection, we wanted to reject this zone again, close as a hammer formation over there, and the week after the market did rally up, ended up coming right back down, okay, and we have officially closed below that zone. So a more likely scenario in this case, in my opinion, would be a pullback to retest on a four hour time frame or daily time frame, to retest that broken through weekly zone, okay, pullback to retest that, and continuation to the downside to occur. That would be a more likely scenario for me. That would definitely be something I want to keep an eye on. Euro versus Japanese yen. On a weekly time frame, it looks like we are approaching this trend line once again. Now, that's a weekly trend line. We don't take buy or sell positions based on weekly trend lines. But it's just there. 
as kind of point of reference. So weekly trend line, we can bounce up from this trend line again. And looking at the general structure over here, it looks as though we formed this bullish pennant with a one to two to three to four to five wave within that bullish pennant. On a daily time frame, we have closed as a bullish engulfing, very, very strong bullish engulfing closure. So what I'm kind of expecting to happen next week for good buy entries would be a little pullback for me to have for me to be able to execute with smaller stop losses, okay, and the continuation to the upside to occur. This will be an amazing risk to reward ratio kind of setup if we are gonna go for that complete swing slash position setup then um, we could literally write this up for about 1600 pips um, but as a more kind of shorter term swing trader or an intraday trader you should be looking at about 300 pips or so um, as a swing trader yeah 300 pips or so with a one to four risk reward ratio which is still pretty amazing the general structure looks very, very bullish to me on a longer term um, kind of analysis as well Euro versus New Zealand dollar. Uh, I'm expecting on a daily time frame for Euro and ZD to form an, uh, a head and shoulder formation. So left shoulder being over there, head being over here, and right shoulder to be level with left shoulder. I like to see that happen. I like to see that formation to occur on the um, daily time frame for Euro New Zealand dollar. So goes without saying sell positions would kick in around that right shoulder over there for a longer term sell position. However, shorter term buy positions, this is similar to Euro Australian dollar where we have uh, this kind of four hour trend line over here waiting for another rejection off of that to take buy positions to that daily reversal zone and the sell positions to kick in then. Quite similar to Euro Australian dollar. Euro versus US dollar. On a weekly time frame, what's happened for Euro versus US dollar? We have, well, three weeks ago, we closed as bullish engulfing. The week after that, we got an inside bar. This is a mother bar inside bar formation or a harami pattern where uh, this candle is completely inside the candle behind it. Kind of like the opposite of an engulfing candle, if that makes sense. Instead of Instead of the candle engulfing the candles behind it, it in a sense engulfs the candle after it, if that makes sense. So this these two candles next to each other are is a mother buying sidebar formation. And this candle, which was the last week, is a clear breakout of that mother buying sidebar formation to the upside. Okay. So on a daily time frame, what I like to see for Euro versus US dollar is a retest of the broken through high retest of the broken through high for the continuation to the upside very simple we have broken we have officially broken above both of these trend lines over here as well i'm going to keep the second one in play because we can still come down for the retest of this trend line okay but um, in essence a setup like this would be very ideal to see or maybe a pullback to retest that trend line over there uh, this is the sort of setup that I would have to update you guys on Telegram, so make sure to follow me on Telegram, um, because this can push up a little bit further before coming down, then we can start to use Fibonacci on and a lot of different stuff. So I will be updating the Telegram channel on this setup. Pound Canadian on a weekly time frame, it looked like it was approaching this zone of reversal over here. Okay, The very absolute bottom of GBP CAD since... 13th of August, since beginning of August last year, okay? However, because of all of these consolidations over here, there are multiple different levels that Pound Canadian can, reje uh, can reject, this level being another one of them. On a weekly time frame, it looks as though we've already closed as a hammer formation, uh, another daily bullish engulfing over there as well, a lot of long wicks to the downside, so I really wouldn't be surprised if the rally to the upside starts now, um, for our convergence as well, for our convergence, I really wouldn't be surprised if the rally to the upside starts now, but for me, I would like to get another push to the downside, a final push to the downside, to reject that kind of 1.661 or 1.662 zone, okay, 
one final push to the downside to reject the main demand zone and the market can make its way up. If that doesn't happen, then we need to look for some potential re-entry options where I normally look at my re-entries um, based on kind of one hour trend lines. Maybe not that one though. Probably not that trend line. Uh, this is quite subjective to be honest with you, but this would be one trend line that I can keep an eye on for a break and retest. Break and retest scenario to the upside. Uh, but a more likely scenario and something that I would really like to see is that one final push to the downside to reject that weekly zone for the buy positions to come in. Pound Swiss Frank. Uh, we are already in this kind of reversal zone. However, the reversal zone is quite big. It can it can come a little bit further down over here and reverse over oops and reverse down here. It can even reject the very bottom of that wick. So it is quite a few different options. However, on the daily time frame, we have formed this convergence over here. Okay, the market is clearly converging on a daily time frame. Now, what I would really like to see is a four hour engulfing, a very powerful engulfing candle pushing its way up for the potential buy positions to kick in. Okay, very strong four hour or daily confirmation for buy positions to kick in. Provided that doesn't happen and the market, and the market continues to the downside, continues this momentum to the downside, then it would be a very simple break and retest scenario. Wait for that break, wait for that retest, and take your sell positions if you have price action. Very simple, very kind of straightforward setup. Pound Yen. The 136 zone that I have been talking about for God knows how many weeks was finally rejected. The 136.000. I've been talking about this level for quite some time. It did finally get rejected on a daily time frame or weekly time frame. We never closed below that zone, which is to perfection. Um, now, some of you guys might already be in this trade. Some of you guys might have buy limit orders at 136, so you are healthy in profit right now. If that is not the case, then you can wait for a more clear break and retest of this trend line on a four hour time frame. Okay. Let me draw it a little bit better. So you can wait for a more dominant break and retest of this trend line on a four hour time frame, a break and a retest for continuations to the upside, or wait for another push to the downside around the 136 level, put your stop losses below 135.5, below, I said 135.5, and then go from there. So either a break and retest scenario to for push to the upside or another push to the downside and the further continuation to the upside should be a very nice trade to take. Pound US dollar. Uh, two scenarios that I'm kind of waiting for over here. Number one, I would like to see a right shoulder be formed over here for us to be able to take some long term buy positions on a four hour time frame for pound US dollar. That's one scenario. The second scenario would be this general zone that I have marked up over here on the four hour time frame with all of these reversals over here. Okay, I would like to see a break and retest of that zone for the continuation to the upside. Now, a break, a retest, and rejecting this trend line as well would be a very nice trade to keep an eye on. So it's kind of two confirmations in one break and retest, touch of the trend line. If that doesn't happen, waiting for that right shoulder to take my buy positions at that right shoulder. Very simple setup, not much needs to be said about this. New Zealand dollar versus Canadian dollar. On a weekly time frame, we are officially within this weekly reversal zone. Okay, weekly reversal zone where previously when we tapped off kind of this general price over here, the market rallied up by 800 pips. So we're not really looking for 800 pips right now, but a couple hundred pips to be able to, for us to squeeze it out of this market would be very nice to see. Daily time frame, we are within this FIB region now, 618 to 71%. This setup is, is, the same, is the same as what I've been covering for a few weeks now, but we are still waiting for this to happen. And if anything, this initial impulse to the upside that we got and the further downside push, all it did 
is that it gave us some convergence. Very easy, very straightforward. Some convergence over here on our MACD. There's a lot of confirmations. We've got the reversal zone, we've got the Fibonacci, we've got the convergence, we've got candlestick formations over here, a lot of weak projections to the downside. So it should be a very nice kind of setup to, um, to follow. Should be a very nice setup to take. Uh, in this case, I'm not going to have my stop loss below 78.6. That's too big of a stop loss. I'll just put it below that zone over there. Um, take profit one would be, or take, yeah, first take profit, I'll take it at the zero zone around there. And second take profit, I'll ride it all the way up to the minus 27 and see how far we can ride it up for. Um, but yeah, it will be a very kind of nice trade to take. Depending on how, how, the market reacts to this in the next few months, it can push all the way up to the minus 601.8 as well. But this is kind of like a position trade that we're talking about right now. This is not a um, swing trade or an intraday trade anymore. New Zealand dollar Swiss franc on a weekly time frame. I am expecting the 0 0.632 zone, which is this previous reversal zone okay i'm expecting that zone to be tapped off on a weekly time frame kind of like a double bottom scenario for the push to the upside daily time frame we've got this trend line put in okay this trend line on the daily time frame now one scenario that we can wait for is potentially a rejection off of this trend line for us to take sell positions down to the 0 0.632 region and when the 0 0.632 region gets tapped off for us to take buy positions up. Very straightforward. Again, not much needs to be said about this setup. I'm expecting a double bottom over there for buy positions, but let's try and sell it to sell it down there as well. So waiting for that trend line to be tapped off yet again for me to take some sell positions. New Zealand dollar versus Japanese yen is kind of like a similar scenario. Uh, 69.4 is the is the zone that I have marked up for buy positions to kick in for New Zealand dollar Japanese yen. Okay, the reason behind that is because on a weekly time frame, that 69.4 is a re reversal point, reversal point, uh, a lot of rejections over there as resistance, support. It's a very valid zone in my in my eyes. So uh, on a weekly time frame, uh, that bearish engulfing, which happened uh, not last week, the week before that, I would expect this to now be followed through. For the market to continue its its momentum to the downside okay so wait for this trend line to be rejected again for you to be able to take some sell positions based on this trend line down to 69.4 and at 69.4 we could be looking for some buy positions to kick in for new zealand dollar japanese yen us dollar versus canadian dollar very very strong weekly closure that closure, very strong weekly closure, not the week before that, but the week before that one, very strong weekly closure as well. So it looks like a lot of sell pressure is entering the market for US dollar versus Canadian dollar. So a very simple uh, kind of setup is on a four hour time frame, I'm waiting for the trend line to be tapped off and the Fib level. Very straightforward, very easy setup, trend line and Fibonacci. Expecting the third touch of the trend line on a four hour time frame as well as uh, the kind of general FIB region for entry, 61.8 to 71%. If need be, I will be adjusting my Fibonacci a little bit if the market pushes down, um, so long as it's valid, obviously. But again, not much needs to be said about this setup either. Finally, US dollar versus the Swiss franc. Uh, similar setup to US dollar Canadian dollar, where I'm waiting for this trend line to be tapped off. Um, I haven't drawn Fibonacci just yet because the market hasn't kind of shown any signs of reversal just yet. That doesn't mean as soon as the market opens, it will just have a rally up. No, this can push down a little bit more and then um, makes its way to the upside. But in general, wait for this trend line to be tapped off. Okay, wait for another exhaustion up to that trend line. Hopefully that will line up with some Fib levels and take some sell positions down. It's kind of identical to US dollar, Canadian dollar. So another setup for you guys to keep an eye on. 
so that's all for this week. These are the pairs that I'll be analysing, the pairs I'll be keeping an eye on for this week. I know there was quite a few, but it doesn't necessarily mean I'm going to execute every single one. That's why, why I said I'll just be keeping an eye on them. I will be waiting for Monday, Tuesday, London and New York overlap to see how the market reacts to the analysis and see if the analysis is still valid. I will also be sending updates for all of these pairs on my Telegram channel. I'll leave the link in the description. If you guys have any questions, don't hesitate to message me on my social media, on my Instagram at Pips of Persia. Also, let me know what you guys think of the analysis. Let me know if you agree or disagree with the analysis. Uh, it would be great to see what you guys think of the different setups and share this video with your friends as well so they can benefit from the analysis shared in this video as well. Have an amazing trading week. Make sure to stick to your trading plan. Make sure to stick to your correct risk management and let's get it. Let's catch some pips.